Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a good weekend. Happy Sunday. Although I'm filming this yesterday, which is Saturday, but still, happy Sunday. Hope you have a cup of coffee at the ready because I want you to enjoy yourself. I want you to enjoy the whole experience, you know. Put on a onesie because I'm so happy that it's onesie weather now. Praise the Lord. It's rainy. Storm Callum is going through Ireland, although I thought he was gone already, but I think he's still around somewhere. Hence, my onesie. God bless whoever made onesies. God bless. Anyway, today's video is pet peeves, so sit back, relax, and here's a list of all the things that annoy the hell out of me. Enjoy! Number one. You're minding your own business, driving along the road. Me and my little daywoo. And someone overtakes you, which is fair enough. I might just be enjoying my day. I mightn't be in a rush anywhere. Someone else is. Overtake me. Go on with yourself. Then, you're just driving along. They overtake you. But then, they don't keep on going. They overtake you and pull right in in front of you and then drive at your speed. If not slower. And you're like... Like... What was the point in that? Why did you have to feel the need to overtake me, put me in harm's way? Because if a car, if a, blah, blah, blah. If a car crash happened, I would have been pulled into that thing without even wanting to be a part of it, you know? You brought me into your mess and then you're overtaking me and then you just drive in front of me slower than what I'm going or the same speed, I don't get that. Like if you want to rush, overtake me, but go away. Don't overtake me, then drive in front of me and then make me overtake you and then it's like bang, 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 bang. You're wasting everyone's time, including your own. Bye. Number two, when your phone charger just does not want to cooperate you. You put it in, it goes, no, no. You hold it to the left, charges. Let go, doesn't charge. Hold it to the right, maybe it charges again. Let go, doesn't charge. You may put it on a, w a wooden table. It charges for five minutes. Then all of a sudden it doesn't. Then all of a sudden it just doesn't want to cooperate at all. You have to get a new one and it's just a pain in the ball. I think everybody can agree. Yes. Three. You're minding your own business once again. You go through the toilet. You're peeing. You're pooping. Whatever you're doing. I don't judge. And then you turn around and there's no freaking toilet roll there. Whether it's in a public toilet. Actually that's really awkward because then you either have to ask someone for the toilet roll or else you just have to like go out when no one's around and go into the next cubicle which is terrifying that you'll bump into someone. Obviously not with your pants down or anything. That's a bit weird. Like obviously you have to do yourself back up and then like shimmy into the next cubicle. But like it's even embarrassing if you're at home in your own house. Like if you go upstairs, go to the toilet, someone forgot to restock the toilet roll off themselves and you're just sitting there like do I either embarrass myself and have to shout for like my mum and dad to get me toilet roll or do you do the same thing as you would in public? You have to like shimmy back on your pants and your trousers, go find toilet roll and then go back to the toilet. It's just not fun. Like, like, you don't want to be doing that. Who wants to do that? Seriously. Not me. My number four is something I had to live through like two or three weeks ago when the electricity went. I was in the shower. I was on my last rinse of rinsing the shampoo and conditioner and like all the suds off of me. And what happens? The electricity goes. And I, like obviously the electricity is always annoying when it goes. But that was the first time I was ever in the shower when it went. And I was in like my mom and dad's ensuite in their bathroom which has no windows. So the only light you can get in there is from the ceiling light that you turn on. So basically the shower went off, the fan turned off and the light bulb went off. So not only was I le le left in a shower with some suds on my body, but I was also left in a small room that's complete darkness because there was no light whatsoever. It was terrifying. I had to get out of the shower. The only light that was coming through the door was like under the little bit of door and like through the keyhole. So I had to like feel my way around, look for a tail, get out and thank God I didn't have salt in my eggs. That would have been embarrassing. But yeah, so not only did that happen, but like, so not only is it annoying when the shower... Take two. <laughs> not only is it annoying when the electricity goes when you're in the shower, but then again, it's annoying when it goes anyway. Because like you don't understand how much... We depend on electricity until it goes and you're like, there's no kettle, there's no shower, there's no phone charging, there's no telly, there's no computer. 
There's no food because we don't really buy canned food or things that you don't have to cook. Because we so depend on electricity. Anyway, I'm getting too heated. Move on. Five. When you chip your nail polish right after you polish them. Now tell me that ain't annoying. Number six. When your legs get stubbly the day after you shave them. Like why? Like hey hair follicles, please, why can't you just stop producing hair? Do you not get the gist that I've been shaving you for every day of my life since I hit puberty and got leg hair? Like... Rude. Stop growing. Or at least, at least go blonde so nobody can see you. But then again, you shave them, you wax them, you do whatever you want. And then like, a few days later, they're stubby again. Like why? Like why are you doing this to me? Like stop. Just stop. Number seven. When you get all cozy with a cup of hot chocolate, watching a show. And who is trying to get in the door? Your dog or your cat or whatever animal you have. They always, always seem to only want to come into the room when you get comfortable. Like the whole day, Kelsey does not want to come anywhere near me. Kelsey's my dog, by the way, if no one, if no one knows. <laughs> um, like literally, sometimes she won't even want anything to do with me, but it just seems like a little radar goes off when she hears Leanne closing the door, sitting down, getting comfy with a blanket, watching whatever I'm watching. Who's at the door? Kelsey. Really? <gasps> Number eight is one that's uh, very close to home. It's the fact that my wash basket never seems to empty. And even when it does, I have to put like dirty pants and socks in the next day. And then before I know it, there's like a jumper, a pajama set, a few leggings in it. And I'm like, I just did washing the other day. How do I have a full wash basket? That is like, what's that saying? Is it the bane of my existence or the vein? Bane? I don't know. But like, uh, I hate washing. Oh my God, can someone please invent, like, uh, come to your house, do all your washing, dry it for me, put it away, service? Please? I'll pay big money for someone to do my washing. I'm just gonna say that for you now. Number nine is when you're like, in a situation and you're just like passing a stranger, maybe you're just having a really good day. You're like, hey, I wanna smile at people today. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna brighten their day. That rhymes. <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Anyway, got sidetracked with my jokes and my little poems and my fabulousness, but what else is new? You're going about your day, you're walking down the street or you're like, I don't know, walking to the shops or what else do people do? I don't know. Out being a human basically. And you pass another fellow human and you say, hi, or hi, how are you? And they just go, They walk past you, no eye contact, no a simple smile, no like, hi, even if they don't know you. That's why I love like living in the country because in Dublin, if you say hi to the people, they look at you like, nobody says that here, honey, <laughs> you're new. <laughs> but like, you're walking down the street in Mead and you just go, hi. Everyone's like, oh, hi, how are you? Like, lovely people, lovely. And like, I love, like, especially when I'm having a shit day and I'm just like, Ugh. walking down the street. If someone goes, hi, how are you? Or like, hey, lovely weather we're having. I'm just like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much for taking that one second out of your day to be like, hi. Like, cause it like sincerely cheered me up. So then when I'm having good days, I s make sure to go out of my way and be like, especially if I see people who might not have me having a good day. Even if they are having a good day, I'm like, hi, hey, hiya, hiya, how are you? And like, it doesn't cost anything to be a good person. So just be nice people. If someone says hi to you, at least smile, say hi. It won't kill you, okay? Appreciate it, that's all I'm asking for. My tenth pet peeve is when mother nature decides to smack you on the ass with your period either early or late and you're out in public with friends or even on your own and you're not prepared. No tampons, no pads, no panty liners, no change of underwear. Sometimes you don't even have a jacket to wrap around your waist until you get home and you can like fix yourself. Like really, Mother Nature, why? Like why did you have to do that to me? I was perfectly okay walking down the town or out doing me bits before you had to grace me with my early period. Really? At least wait until I have a pad on me or something. Girl, please. 
Number 11, when you're left on red. Freely. Bye. Number 12. My number 12 pet peeve is when someone does you dirty. They're like not loyal to you. They screw you over. They just can't see your side of the story and how they hurt your feelings. And they're like, oh, you're making it up. This is all your thing. I didn't do anything wrong. This is just me. I can't change. Blah, blah, blah. And then you decide that karma wants to be a little bitch. Or maybe you want to be karma. <laughs> Who knows? And you decide to give them a taste of their medicine. Which personally, I love doing. Because I feel like everybody should get a taste of their own medicine. Like, hello. But my favourite part of the whole thing is they hurt you or like a little ass to you and then you start treating someone how they treat you and they have the audacity to get annoyed at you when all you're doing is acting how they act every damn day of their life. You know? Yeah. Bitch, bye. Shoo. Number 13 is when people walk the walk but don't talk the talk. Wait, did I say that backwards? I said that backwards, let's try again. Take two. When people, wait, which way is it go? When people talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Okay. Wait, did I not say that right the first time? Oh no, I can't remember. Let's just do it again. When people talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Carry your shit, get out of my life. Only need genuine people. Yeah. Only need genuine people. Only need people I can trust. Only need genuine people. I can't think of another word that rhymes with trust. Number 14, people who feed you empty promise after empty promise after empty promise and say they'll change, say they want to be better, they tell you everything you want to hear. But do they ever change? Of course not. Why? Because they don't really want to. They don't really care about you. They're just feeding you all these damn lies because you believe them. So don't believe them, honey bunny. You can do better. You deserve better. Leave them in the past. Move on. Boom. Pet peeve number 15. When someone eats all the good sweets out of a selection box or not a selection box, what's it called? Like, you know what Christmas when everyone gets those like big tubs of sweets like celebrations or quality street or any of those kind of things? And, like you go to quality street, there's no golden barrels left. You go to the celebrations, all the Malteser ones are gone. Gone? Gone. Like you know what I mean? Like leave at least one for me, you know? If you're my friend and I go to just quality straight after you, you taking all the golden baller, blah, 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 blah. you taking all the golden barrels, I'm not your friend anymore. No. <laughs> oh my god, imagine, imagine someone was that protective over the sweets. Like I know I like golden barrels, but I'm not literally that protective over my golden barrels. Like calm down people, calm down. Number 16, when a teacher or tutor or whatever you want to call them, lecturer, has the audacity to fail you on a test by 1% or even 2% or even like 3%. Like if it's 5% or less, literally you're just taking the piss. Give them the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 percent. Really? You're crushing dreams. You're crushing dreams. And if you're a teacher that does that, the cheek. Cheek of you. <laughs> the cheek. Cheek of you. She'll be ashamed. Ashamed. Everyone's just going to unsubscribe after this video. I feel like I'm just buzzing after the coffee I had earlier. Actually, no, that was like ages ago. Why am I hyper? Maybe I'm just having the laws of myself. What else is new, you know? What else is new? Number 17. When someone just chooses not to use their indicators when they're driving. You know? Isn't that just fun? You don't know where they're going. They're keeping you on your toes. They're not saying they're left, going left. They're not saying they're going right. They're just driving. And you just have to wait and see what happens. Love that. Love. Number 18. Seagulls in general. Hate them. Don't want to go anywhere near them. 
If you're a seagull, don't come anywhere near me. I will attack back. Number 19. When your bank account does the amazing thing and doesn't inform you that they're going to be taking money out for like account fees. They just take it out and you wake up and you don't have the same money in your account than you did the night before when you checked before you went to bed and you have bills and you have shit that you have to take out and you're just like, thanks for taking all that money off me. You could have at least texted me, hon. Cheers. And pet peeve number 20. When you do a jigsaw that you know you'll love and you get to the end and you're on the last piece and then you look around and realise there is no last piece. Why? Why does the universe want to test me right now? You know? And to prove that this pet peeve is a big one of mine, I will show you. Lovely, isn't it? Just lovely. That is my Statue of Liberty jigsaw piece that me and my sister Natalie did we got the all the way to the end piece missing but I didn't care she's still going on the wall like that took us days and days and days to do so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this pet peeves video give us a thumbs up if you like this subscribe to my channel if you haven't already it really helps me out so I'd really appreciate it love you guys and I'll see you in the next one bye